Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a really, really, actually, really long time, or a long time ago in a galaxy far away from the Croak Star Wars, but I'm back and don't know what it is, but today I actually felt like making some form of video. I was thinking of all different prehistoric species that I've covered in the past, which I've covered a fair few, but I wanted to do something different and something very different. So the prehistoric species in the spotlight today is by the name of Cotylorhynchus, if I'm pronouncing that properly. I apologise if I'm not, but Cotylorhynchus, meaning cup snout. Uh, this is one of the oddest creatures you're probably going to see. This odd looking behemoth represents one of the largest Permian beasties, and once it's really, I would say, it reached its full size, I would say even one of the most notorious carnivores of the Permian period, known as Dimetrodon, which I'm pretty sure means two measures of teeth would have not really been able to threaten this thing, it just would have been too big. Here we got another beautiful little picture of Cotylorhynchus, looking uh, fabulous as usual. Cotylorhynchus lived in what is now uh, known as North America, with no locations being Oklahoma and Texas. Cotylorhynchus lived during a geological time period known as the Permian, which also goes by the famous little name of the Great Dine, because around 90, you're probably tired than that, I think it's 95% of all organic life actually went extinct during that time period. And we haven't had a, a mass extinction event that has yet to exceed that high tally. Uh, the Buddha Permian, it lived around 280 to 217 million years ago within the a range, a temporal range of the Permian known as the Kungurian Range. Cotyrhynchus could have reached up to 6 metres in length or 18 feet, and it's highly likely that this large size was its best defence against possible predators. Examples being huge titanosaurs, such as Argentinosaurus in Argentina, that possible predators would have been, I want to say, Giganontosaurus and Mapasupus. But once an animal sometimes just reaches a certain size, there's just nothing that's going to kill it unless it dies of old age or disease, which is a fact. And it's a very, very useful adaptation. So when someone tells you be self-conscious about how big you are, ignore that. It's a good adaptation. But moving on, there are only three species of Cotylorhynchus yet described, with the earliest known species being Cotylorhynchus romeri, which was discovered in 1937 by John Willius Stovall. We also got Cotylorhynchus hancockii, which is 1953 by Olsen and Bierbauer and Cotylorhynchus brassonii, which was 1962 by Olsen and Berghsen. And Cotylorhynchus, you might have been able to guess it by just looking at the anatomical features of it, or just the, the what pictures you've seen so far, but it was definitely a herbivore. Here we've got another two pretty pictures of Cotylorhynchus, although I do apologise that the top one is a bit distorted. Also think, uh, if you are watching, obviously I hope you're watching this video, but in the top video above you have two Cotylorhynchus, like, in the river, and I want to say the animal on the bottom, un under the top left of Cot the big Cotylorhynchus on the left, is a Diplocalis, what was like an amphibian back then, and we had, there was a hoax going around the internet of a Diplocalis, which someone had thought, they thought they'd actually found a Diplocalis, but it was just someone that made a really, really good model, but moving on. Cotylorhynchus's huge size was probably not only useful for protection, but it was also it housed very, very large digestive organs, which when you're an animal this big, you need big organs to maximise nutritional gain. Much like you could compare this to like modern day cows or ruminants having four specialised uh, digestive organs, like being the absomase and obsomase and rumen and reticulorum. Because overall their diet ain't nutrient rich, but because they have specialised organs, they can make maximum use of the nutrients they are getting. Uh, but despite this uh, big size, it's actually quite likely that the four forearms on this animal would have been used to uproot plants, and the Cotyrhynchus itself, despite being bulky and looking quite unmovable, would have had very, very strong, powerful shoulders, which would have benefited it in for this certain adaptation in like, uprooting plants, roots, I mean, how to get more out of its diet. Here we've got another good picture of Cody the Rinkus. Quite like black and white pictures. But it's quite likely that Cody the Rinkus, as pictured here, would have been a quadruped or, or quadrupedal, meaning it walked on all fours. 
and that his forearms would have been very strongly built. It is also believed that Cody Larinkus possessed a lot of dexterous control in these forearms, hinting that Cody Larinkus would have been able to dig and forage for additional food sources to support its large, impressive body size. I myself uh, forage on a regular basis, but my trips and foraging uh, locations only seem to be the fridge and KFC, which is I don't recommend that to anyone else. Although the skull of Cody Rinkus is actually very small compared to the rest of its body, it is actually still possesses a quite large fenestra, or fenestra, I have trouble pronouncing this word, I've got written down, within the nostrils. And this indicates that Cody Rinkus has a highly potent sense of smell, which would have allowed it to locate food that would have been generally out of its line of sight. And this would be quite a quite similar comparison to this would have been modern day pigs searching for delicious succulent truffles. I just wanted to finish up with this hilarious picture to uh, conclude the video. Here we got a Cody Dorincus pouncing like some form of raptor onto a Tyrannosaurus Rex and defeating it in battle. Or well, I'm pretty sure the Cody Dorincus is going to win this. Just for the record, just in case anyone is thinking what the hell, because I would. Uh, these two animals would have never met, so don't worry about that. And I'm pretty sure a Tyrannosaurus would have no trouble dispatching Cody Dorincus in an actual fight. But this picture cracked me up when I found it. I apologise if this video has been a bit off like my usual standards, which is actually going back quite a few months now. I do still feel a bit under the... well, I don't feel too well anyway, but I'm quite happy with the quality of this video so far. I do hope to start releasing more videos in the future, and I might look at more prehistoric like oddities and other strange and unusual animals that we have living on the planet today. Hopefully I'll release some more videos in the future. If you have enjoyed this video, I have many more videos of this type still on my channel. And overall, I hope you have a good day. Goodbye for now.